begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! And how you guys doing? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. What's wrong with you non-subscribers? Don't you know that this is the best biker news morning show out there? You always get both sides of the story. And boy, I'd probably piss you off as well. You know, I tend to do that kind of stuff. Uh, Thanks for everybody for uh, joining me today. No, you probably have nothing better to do than just listen to a schluck like me. No, I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. Uh, Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I was pretty freaking lagging on yesterday's show. I watched that one. I was like, damn, man, you need to freaking like lay off that 420 stuff, man. It puts you in the mood. You know, too freaking calm, man. And I'm usually not known for being calm. Can't do that when you present the biker news, man. You got a lot of schlucks out there that are haters already. You got to prove them wrong. (laughs) I actually got a video going up on YouTube and Facebook Saturday where I address, yes, I address, some of those haters and their belief that motorcycle clubs are a thing of the past. I also would, you know what, they probably are Leo. They still upset with me over Corey Graff's wall of shame. Oh boy, are they upset about that one. I guess they don't like being exposed. How does it feel is what I have to say. How does it really feel? Tell me. You're always uh, out there banging on one percenters. Last couple shows, we covered that uh, New Jersey uh, Commission uh, crime report on the Pagans, where you're all back and forth. I don't even think you guys know what you were talking about in that report. I think you were confused. Or, you on some 420 like I was on yesterday's segment. You just confused, man. Just confused. So anyway, you know... Once in a while, I'll get some extreme haters about MCs. And they just go off, man. They're like freaking stupid. They're just stupid. Ignorant. I got to add ignorant in there right there. They never present any arguments. None. On what they are trying to push. So... Be on the lookout for that video. I get pretty freaking stupid in that one, man. Like I say to my non-subscribers just checking out this video, I will piss you off once in a while, man. But hey, that's my job. I'm just a dirty old biker now. And boy, talking about old, man. Hey, Greybeards, were you warned when you were, you know, youngin' not to party so much because it would come back and bite you in the ass? Listen to your gray beards, people. I'm telling you, they were so right about that. Man, it seems in the last couple weeks, I've been dragging ass, man. This knee problem that I'm having that I'm going to get looked at and stuff has been killing me. Haven't been able to work out whatsoever. And everybody knows I love working out. I can't even put freaking, I can't even lift weights without this knee about to go off, so I've been laid up from that. Oh my god, oh my goodness. Sad state of affairs, as I always say, when you can't work out. Anyway, just a little news going on around the country. Did you see that Project Veritas video? Oh, man, this country is going in a bad, 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 bad direction. They, you know what? They've been saying that this mail-in ballot stuff is a big fraud. And you better believe it, man, because they got video of this guy talking about how he picked up 300 absentee ballots. And this is in Minnesota where there's a fight up there uh, in Illinois. 
Omar's. Uh, you know, the one that married a brother? That sick puppy, man. I'm telling you, sick puppy. Uh, her district, and they were filling out the absentee ballots. 300. That's a lot of freaking uh, ballots because he almost won that freaking state back in uh, 2016. And then you got that wicked witch of the West, literally, she's out of San Francisco, uh, that so-called Speaker of the House telling everybody to get ready in Congress to get their delegations together because they think they're going to have to decide the election. Yeah, get out of our hands, the voters, and decide. You know what? They're playing Chicago politics, every one of them. Every one of them. But if you got a chance... Go over and listen and watch this Project Veritas. Whew! I'm actually hoping it comes up in the first presidential debate tomorrow. <laughs> That's going to be, a, you know what, a comedy show. Guaranteed, now mark my words, that the moderator is going to attack uh, Trump and not attack Biden. That's how it works, man. Don't believe the media propaganda. They have no issues whatsoever that now they're going back to the 2016 tax return crap. Like I care about that. I don't. He's rich. They always try to not pay as much taxes as they can. Give me a freaking break. While, you know, our soldiers, our homeless vets, all that. Come on, that's the problems you guys should be focusing on. Not to mention... Not to mention, Motorcycle Club profiling. I was talking uh, today to Dom. And everybody knows Dom rides cross country. He was profiled like hell in Indiana. Because he was going to Nebraska, pulled over by a colored cop. He mentioned he was going to a MAGA rally, and boy, did it go downhill from there. Now, there's two things with that that I don't understand. Why in the world would any cop want to vote for Biden or any fucking uh, person on the loony left? After they want to defund this and defund that, they don't like cops. So that's what I don't understand. And of course, you know, I always have my argument why would any colored want to freaking vote Democrat anyway? They are the party of racists. But I guess they just been brainwashed so much over the decades that they'll vote for him. Anyway, this guy writes him a ticket. He, he, Dom said he must not have been in the car more than 30 freaking seconds and came back and uh, handed him a ticket. Dom rides a Harley Davidson. Ticket says Honda on there. So, hopefully, that ticket gets thrown out of court. Dom's already contacted the Motorcycle Profiling Project to try to see what they can do. But, man, yeah, the haters. The haters don't understand the clubs are the ones fighting for your damn rights. But you're out there hating. You're hating. You're schlucks. <laughs> People ask me what schlucks mean, okay? It's a you know it's a Chicago thing. It's a cro uh, it's a cross between schmuck and you know what f u c k baby. That's what it means. Okay, so stop bugging me about that. You know, saying nasty things about our Chicago stuff, man, and our sh uh, Chicago lingo. You know, go f yourself if that's the case. Uh, cubbies, go cubbies, man. Woo woo. We're gonna kill it this year. So, uh, yeah. Dom's going to probably be on the program soon. We're waiting to see what the hell happens with this ticket. That way to come on, talk about it. He's also going to talk about his long ride distance. Uh, his Dude, this guy puts on some miles, man. It's like, okay, you want to talk about riding. You know, talk with Dom. This dude can ride. You know, I don't want to hear those people say, oh, I ride over 38 states and blah, blah, blah. He does it in six months, man. He's hit everywhere in six months. Now, that's what I'm talking about there is riding. You know, we often forget that because we're so caught up in this social media crap. And yeah, I'm a content creator. I like you watching and listening over on Spotify and iTunes and all that stuff to the show. 
But don't spend all your time on the internet, man. You got to get out there and ride. Enjoy what this is all about. It is not all about watching your bike in a garage. Not like that. You know, it was meant to actually move and go places and all that good stuff. It also means don't hang around in a bar gossiping like a bunch of freaking uh, teenage cheerleaders in, you know, your local high school. No, don't do that. And especially, don't try to act the part. I actually did a video about the word brother, and everybody's heard that from all creators. Don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't do it. You know, uh, Long Rider had a good point about, you know, some independence. And uh, by the way, Long Rider is uh, donating money and stuff. And I finally figured out what kind of contest we can have. The one who shares the video over on YouTube and Facebook the most each week will get yourself a little surprise. Signed copy of the book, uh, t-shirts. Uh, the t-shirts, I think I need a different supplier. I don't like how they came out. So let's just stick with the signed copy of New Age and uh, Biker and Brotherhood. But you have to share the video as many times as you can each day for a week. And then you'll get a surprise. This sponsored by Long Rider. You know, it took me, you know, some time to figure out a contest. You know, we were going to do the most uh, miles road, but I don't know. Uh, I think it's easier doing it this way because I can actually track it. Yes, I can track it. So don't try to freaking, uh, you know, skimp out here, man. Uh, but anyway... Long Rider was talking about the word brother. A lot of people don't, you know, think about it that way because they're not in clubs. And it's an interesting point. Interesting point. Uh, I think the reason why it bugs me so much is because when I grew up in the neighborhood and stuff, nobody used that. That was a no-no. That was the biggest disrespect you could have. Reason being is neighborhood took family very sacred and you would only call your blood relatives that. You know, on the street we would say Coronel, all that stuff, but never freaking brother or hermano. Never, never, never did that. But it was a good interesting point from Long Rider. I really appreciate that. So let's get into the biker news and have some uh, fun, shall we? And by the way, this is what I'm talking about with the contest. Get your copy of New Age of Biking and Brotherhood by Insane Throttle, very own James Hollywood Match Garden. New Age of Biking and Brotherhood will take you on a journey of the past and present bikers. Get your copy on Amazon and all major book retailers. Rock on. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Oh, we're going to get some to the good stuff, but before we do, if you want to help the show, Super Chat and YouTube, baby. Two bucks goes a long way. I appreciate the donations, man. YouTube, they are cutting a lot of people off, man, and it's getting hard out there. Anyway, good stuff. MyHighPlanes.com. Toys for Tots Biker Parade held in Amarillo. Looks like the Toys for Tots stuff is going to get going, man. Make sure you visit your local uh, Toys for Tots uh, poker run and runs. Bring yourself a new toy. It really helps a lot of kids enjoy Christmas, man. So make sure you attend one near you. The Toys for Tots uh, poker run and biker Sunday Amarillo took place uh, over the weekend with the Biker Sunday Parade held on Sunday. Man, that's a mouthful, I bet. The weekend-long event started on September 26th with a poker run starting at 10.30 at Billy Max RV in Amarillo. 
Those that took part in the poker run paid $20 for an entry fee or donated a toy of equal value. Don't skip on the toys, people. These are going to kids that can't have a Christmas, so get your damn wallets out and buy a good toy. Just saying. On Sunday, September 27th, the toy run took place at Scooter's. And a parade was held at 1 p.m. that started at Christian Heritage Church. Rock and roll, man. You know, the old man upstairs house uh, at 900 South Nelson. Uh, there's also going to be biker games and all that good stuff out right there. But uh, that just happened. But I just wanted to put a shout out, man, and let you guys know. Hey, make sure you freaking go to these things. Uh, anyway, let's go out to Biker Dad. We haven't had one for a while. Sad state of affairs. This one. Police looking for Florida hit-and-run driver. You know what? I get tired of hearing these hit-and-run drivers. Come on. Who slammed into two bikers. Be careful out there, people. Be careful. Don't get hurt. You know, you got these freaking cagers that are either angry and consider you a bikers for Trump and they just want to run over you. Or they don't watch what they're doing because under they're on their damn cell phones. Carry some ball bearings with you. When they fall out of your pocket, oops! Yeah. It teaches them something. Anyway, the Clearwater Police Department are searching for a hit-and-run driver following a crash on State Road 590. State Road 590 shut down between West Virginia Lane. By God, West Virginia, man. That's heaven right there. Lots of family from there. And Thomas Drive, as traffic homicide investigators were on scene, police say one car and two motorcycles were involved in that crash, and the car fled the scene afterwards. Now, uh, how much you want to bet when they catch this schluck, he's going to say, well, I was afraid for my life. Idiot. One of the motorcyclists was taken to Bayfront Health St. Petersburg as a trauma alert with potentially life-threatening injuries. I'm so hoping he uh, or they get, uh, you know, out of this. Yeah, I hate seeing guys lose their lives on bikes. Uh, police say the ve vehicle that left the scene is possibly a dark BMW with front-end damage. Anyone out there with information on the suspect vehicle should call. 727-562-4242. Our thoughts are with those involved in this accident and hopefully get the shock. Now, let's go out to, uh-oh, Merle's Inlet uh, Bar. They were granted that permit. Let's listen. Bike rally. Rally lasts through the week ahead. News 13's Lauren Crawford spoke with a Merle's Inlet Bar who is welcoming bikers after what they call a miscommunication last week. When we had some good signs this weekend, we can usually monitor the first weekend to be able to tell how it's going to be. Motorcycles roll in for the fall rally. Turnout is looking good for businesses whose participation in the fall tradition was reported to be at stake a few days ago. It was pretty much a miscommunication and we got it all worked out. South Carolina's Department of Revenue was looking to revoke the Merle's Inlet Biker Bar's alcohol license after a staggering crowd appeared in pictures violating COVID-19 restrictions. Well, it all was with the July rally the last day. We were kind of overwhelmed. But ultimately, it was up to the State Department of Commerce, who most recently approved the Biker Bar's ability to host this week's fall rally. Miscommunication came as the Department of Commerce previously denied the permit. We're prepared now for this one to, to where that won't happen again. Whether it was miscommunication or a wake-up call from state officials, the biker bar says crowd management has improved and safety restrictions have heightened during the public health crisis. Hosting the fall rally, Bill Barber said, was not only important to the biker community, but restaurants, hotels, and retail. This is important to our community financially and mentally and socially. It really is. People have been locked up all year and it's good to get out and be a human being again. The Biker Bar is granted a permit to host more than 250 people on nearly three acres of property while agreeing to enforce proper safety measures, hire more security, and keep track of bar capacity. We're looking forward to a good, safe rally. In Merle's Inlet, Lauren Crawford, News 13. I don't know. What do you guys think about this, man? 
uh, you know, it's, what is it, October almost? You know, 2020 has been a terrible freaking year, man. Terrible year. Uh, now, I wear a mask wherever I go. I look at everybody else like they got cooties and stuff. Uh, would you go to something like this? Now, personally, me, I think, you know, it's a business. Let them uh, earn their money. Make sure that you enforce this social distancing crap so people... And you know what? The flu season's coming up. And the flu is killed a lot more, I believe, you know, looking at the numbers and stuff like that than this COVID has. Uh, but me, I don't like the flu, and I don't take the flu vaccine because I get sick. And yeah, people say, no, you don't get sick with the flu ba vaccine. Oh, bullshit, you don't. Uh, anyway, uh, with flu season coming up, it might be a good, you know, might be a good thing with this mask stuff, man. You know, washing your hands. People actually got, uh, you know, educated, if you will, about trying not to spread all this stuff. But, you know, let me know what you guys think. Uh, this was the bar that we've been talking about that was uh, supposed to get its uh, license taken away. I guess it's not anymore, so that's good news. So I'm just looking to the side of this article. Second stimulus checks. Uh, the Wicked Witch of the West is optimistic. Sides can't agree on new aid package. Yeah, it's just right before election. That's why you're doing it. But don't tell anybody about your loony left uh you know projects and your priorities but hey you know what they get it done that's 1200 bucks in a individual's pocket 3000 or something uh, for a family so that would be good either way uh let's see here another good one another good one an annual biker fundraiser to support a cancer patient next at 6 30 a community of bikers is helping an atumwa woman in her fight against cancer the outlaw rebel riders of Ottumwa will be throwing their end of the year fundraiser at Greater Ottumwa Park tomorrow. A portion of the proceeds raised during this year's event will go on to support Jana Robinson battling non Hodgkin's lymphoma. We've got members of our own that are, are that have battled cancer and 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 different illnesses and, and it's tough and we just want to help out as much as we can. Festivities will kick off at noon tomorrow at the Jimmy Jones Shelter. There will be bounce houses, food, and other vendors. The event is scheduled to last until 10 p.m. Rock on, guys. Uh, always uh, glad with when bikers are out there in their community showing everybody that, hey, you know what? Our portrayal isn't what they're saying. Now let's go up, uh, I believe, up north. Uh, you know, my crazy people up there. Non Kilawana, and I probably said that wrong. You're gonna, you, you see in the comment section, they actually, uh, you know, put out the uh, translation. Hell's Angel Associate to face trial in October. Colin Michael Bailey is set to stand trial next month for an alleged aggravated assault here. Hmm. <laughs> A man who uh, police have described as a known associate of the Kitalawana Hells Angels chapter will face trial in the coming weeks. Do you know, uh, you know, alleged associate, and then you get the freaking uh, patch all in the newspaper. We got to put what we cover in our stuff, and it's only a damn known associate, really. Uh, Colin Michael Bailey is set to stand trial on October 19th for an alleged aggravated assault that put a man in the hospital in May. His trial was initially supposed to begin in January when it was rescheduled to September. Now it has been delayed a further few weeks as he has re-elected to have a, a trial heard by a Supreme Court judge alone. Said the BC Prosecution uh, Service Communication Council, Dan McLaughlin, jury trials are currently not moving forward due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Bailey was arrested in 2019 as the RCMP executed a search warrant on the Hells Angel Clubhouse in the city. He remains out on bail. Oh, rock on. So that going on up north, and here is the story I was telling you about. Telling you about. Project Veritas uncovers ballot harvesting fraud in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. A ballot harvesting racket in Democratic Rep. Elon Omar 
Elon, the one that married her uh, brother. Uh, Minnesota, they sick, puppies, man. They sick. Minneapolis district where paid workers illegally gathered absentee ballots from elderly Somali immigrants appears to have been busted by undercover news agency Project Veritas. One alleged ballot harvester, Libin Mohammed, the brother of many, and this is funny, brother of Minneapolis City Council member Jamal Osman, is shown in a bombshell Snapchat video rifling through piles of ballots strewn across his dashboard. Quote, just today we got 300 for Jamal Osman, says Mohammed, a.k.a. King Libin 1, in the video. I have 300 ballots in my car right now, and we should be trusting these. Why? Yeah, you're playing Chicago politics, you know, uh, you know. They probably collected them, too, from the dead. Uh, numbers don't lie. You can see my car is full. All these here are absentee ballots. Look, all these are for Jamal Ejman, he says, displaying the right. Uh, and this is according to the video. Uh, money is king in this world, and a campaign is driven by money. Hmm. The video posted on July 1st was obtained by Project Veritas and included... A 17-minute video ex expose released Sunday night under Minnesota law. No individual can be the designated agent for more than three absentee voters. The allegations come just five weeks before a presidential election plagued with predictions of for voter fraud. Both President Trump and Attorney General Bill Barr have warned that the increased use of mail-in ballots due to COVID-19 concerns, which all these that are preaching about you need to mail in your vote are going to the polls themselves. Sad state of affairs. Uh, are vulnerable to fraud, especially when unsolicited ballots are mailed. Project Veritas investigation in Minneapolis will pour gasoline on the fire only 48 hours before Trump debates uh, the empty shell. Addressing topics include election security. Anyway, Corey Graff's wall of shame, baby! Pineville police claims ambushed officer shot himself offered uh, you know altered facts. well we've been covering the Pineville police officer shooting since Monday when the officer claimed to have been ambushed and shot off of military highway when he was exiting his vehicle but now Pineville police says that the officer actually shot himself Dylan Domain has the details <laughs> On Monday, September 21st, I was here in Pineville reporting that a Pineville police officer was shot at by an unknown person in the alleyway behind the shopping center. We find out a few days later that the officer, who we now know as John Goulart Jr., shot himself, concealed, and then altered the facts. The officer has been placed on administrative leave and has been charged with one count of criminal mischief for filing the false police report and one count of malfeasance in office for creating the falsehood while wearing a Pineville police uniform. He has been booked into the Rapids Parish Detention Center and his bond will be set by a Rapids Parish District Judge. Pineville Police Chief Don Weatherford said that the police department and a team of investigators were trying to follow any lead in evidence from Officer Goulart Jr.'s original report, but eventually the investigation led back to him. We had no reason initially to, to uh, question uh, what he was telling us was accurate. <clears throat> and as it progressed, uh, uh, that evidence gives you some pretty clear direction. And uh, it led us to, to re-interviewing Officer Goulart. And uh, he admitted at that point that it had not been he had not been truthful with us in the investigation. Chief Weatherford told me that the Rapids Parish District Attorney, Philip Terrell, helped him in determining the proper charges for the officer. The investigation into the original ambush report has been closed, but the investigation will now go into the next phase of the officer's actions. Chief Weatherford credits the other members of the Pineville Police Department for having an open mind and integrity during the investigation, which led to the arrest of one of their own. Oh my goodness gracious, why couldn't he just admit he shot himself this schluck? You know what, he, he probably got a little discipline, he wouldn't have got arrested, 
Boy, do you deserve to be in the wall of shame, if anything, right there. And you guys are bitching. You're the ones who bitch about the motorcycle clubs, and you're going around shooting yourselves and, you know, trying to make up. Uh, you know what? What worries about worries me about that is they would have tried to frame somebody for that shooting when they didn't do it. Sad state of affairs. Let's go to my final thoughts right after. China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify at podcast and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Hey guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Get on over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get your biker news. There is a ton of stuff over there. Also, man, Hollywood and China Doll Show. We're kind of edgy on that show, man. That is on YouTube, Spotify, all that good stuff. If you're not a subscriber over on the Hollywood and China Doll Show, just like I said earlier, what the hell is wrong with you? Get on over there and check it out, baby. Then, of course, Bagger Syndicate Cycle, you know, the ones who supply all my hats. They got all kinds of logos on that one. Uh, anyway, my thoughts. Oh, boy, do I have some thoughts. I love highlighting the stories that bikers do good in the community. That is the only way to fight against the propaganda that the news media puts out about bikers. We are not a favorite of the news media and the loony left right now. Why? Because they always mistake all bikers as supporters of Trump. There's been two incidences that I know of that people have claimed that bikers are white supremacists. That why they got ran over. And now you got this thing with the hit and run down, uh, I believe, in Florida. I already freaking forgot. Uh, but uh, anyway, not cool, man. Not cool. Sad state of affairs. Uh, with this stuff <laughs> by the way people say I see uh, rubbing your fingers and stuff why are you doing that well you know that helps me uh, forget about the pain I have in my knee man my god I hate that pain anyway uh, you know I love just highlighting that stuff because I do a lot of bad news pound dark side by the way everybody calls us the dark side of uh, the biker uh, lifestyle I guess so pound dark side, you know, I try to put a little light in there, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, so if you have a Toys for Tots run near you, make sure you get out there and get involved in it. There's nothing better than to go to a Toys for Tots run. Yeah, it's pretty freaking cold here in Chicago with the damn things, but uh, I always wonder, why the hell can't you put them in, like, October or September? No, you got to put that stuff when it's snowing out here, and it's going to be bad up here in northern Illinois again, man. Uh, the cold, oh, my God, that polar vortex. How do you people up north in Canada live in this crap, man? Holy crap. You know, no wonder snowmobiles sell real good up there. That's one thing I have to get, man. I should get me an old snowmobile and do some videos with that. I think it'd be freaking fun. Uh, but then, you know, you go into the bad news with the Kilowana. I probably, or Kelowana, you know, whatever the way it's uh, spelled. You guys crazy up in Canada, man. I don't, you know, use all these words, French and all that stuff. I didn't take French in high school. Now I know why I should have. But uh, if I would have known, I'd be covering news up in Canada. Boy, oh boy. Uh, but, you know, you notice how they had to throw in that Hells Angel Associate stuff. Yeah, he was busted at the clubhouse, but he wasn't a member. And they just used the hell out of that one to sell papers, baby. That's the way they work, man. What can I say? That's your news media. I guess there's fake news all over the world now, man. Uh, Trump coined that one right. 
fake news everywhere. And you know what? Before all this, you really didn't, you know, really have to look into how the media reported stuff. But now they're so damn biased, they don't even try to hide anything anymore. They really don't. You know, there's just a few sources out there that are down the middle. The rest are either far left or far right. You can't get any uh, decent news anymore. Uh, as far as that Project Veritas thing, there's a guy that, uh, you know, says, oh, it was taken out of context. Bullshit, it was right on video, buddy. Right on video. How the hell are you going to say it was taken out of context? Screw you, buddy. And then I guess a bunch of Wisconsin loony left uh, groups are saying they've been targeted by Project Veritas. They reported it to the cops. And it's like, well, wait a second. It's undercover reporting. You know, it used to be that way. But I guess, uh, you know, it's not like that. And they say, well, they're, you know, they make stuff up, blah, blah. They show all the proof, man. <laughs> the video is all you need. You know, uh, uh James O'Keefe, man, he usually just, he lets it come out in parts because he gets the most uh, bang for the buck with the media, but they've been right on, man. They've been sued and they've won every case that I know of, but you got to really make sure if you're voting, vote in person, make sure your vote counts. There's going to be a lot of fraud in this election. It's bad enough that this year's been horseshit. Bad enough that all the blue state governors, all they doing is putting all these restrictions on you, like you're a prisoner. You know, I call it uh, behind enemy lines. <laughs> Sad state of affairs, man. Why the hell are they doing it? Well, because they want to win an election where I don't, you know, get it. Why would anybody vote for these people? They're taking away your freedoms. They lie to you 24-7. It's just, it's craziness. You know, somebody please, for the love of God, help me out. Why do people vote that way? I just need a friggin' answer, man. And nobody ever gives me a good damn answer on this subject. Never do. So that's my thoughts on that. And then, of course, the wall of shame. My God, come on. Are you kidding me? You shot yourself. Then you reported it as somebody shooting at you. What if they freaking busted somebody that was just in the area, not doing nothing, minding their own business, and you run with that? Oh, my God. I just could imagine, you know, you arrest somebody uh, for something they didn't do. They're spending time in jail. <sighs> Come on, man. They should throw the book at this freaking guy because that's what could have happened. And it's them kind of cops that people get upset about. They get up, they get really upset about because, you know, just like bikers, you know, there's bad ones, but those are the few. And the majority isn't bad. Uh, I know there's a lot of bikers that support law enforcement. I'm actually going to be talking about that in the video. And I'm going to try to be taught, you know, given my viewpoints on that. Uh, how everything's changed but of course yeah everything does change over time now doesn't it <laughs> so i'll be doing a video on that and i'll also be doing a rebuttal show to something very interesting that i just seen that was on youtube uh guy's name's mel he used to be an ex-henchman turned angel and he was talking about that 90s war well some of the stuff you said wasn't true, buddy. Some of the stuff wasn't true. You lied. Lied to make yourself look good. Some of your facts are totally off when it comes to that war in the 90s. Yeah, it was bad. The third largest bomb in the U.S. went off on Grand Avenue right in front of your clubhouse. Uh, so yeah, you know, I'm eventually gonna, you know, address that one. I'm just going point because it's like a two hour freaking video. So I'm gonna have to try to go through, see what he says, take the segments, uh, and the comment after those segments that he's talking about, man. I think the record should be set straight. Sad stuff, man. But anyway, that is my final thoughts. Don't forget 
Monday through Friday at 7 p.m., man, Central Standard Time. Hey, we're looking at Hollywood and China Dow show. Uh, it is freaking, you know, she's all about sex, baby. It's just, Okay, I, you know what? I shouldn't uh, try to sing. I should just stick to my day job. But anyway, man, China gets raw. I get raw on it, man. It's actually a fun show. It's been growing. You know, it's been out for, what is it, 19 episodes. You know, so 19 days. The channel's grown, which we really appreciate uh, for the continued support. Uh, the super chats you can always uh, support the show through that that is much appreciated after what YouTube's going I can already guarantee uh, when you re we reach the threshold for the ads uh, partnership that none of them videos are going to be able to get uh, monetized because of the rules now right now I'm always watching out for what we got here because <sighs> YouTube ain't like 10 years ago, I can tell you that. Uh, but anyway, that is the show today. Really appreciate uh, everybody dropping by, all the support. Remember our contest. For those that share the videos as many times as you can each day, we'll get a free copy signed New Age and Biker and Brotherhood compliments of long rider with that i'll talk to you guys later be good nah be bad i said goodbye vamoose adios ciao so long get your hat jack hi this is james hollywood machikari host of motorcycle madhouse morning mayhem check me out over on instagram at insane throttle biker news and join in on the discussion over on our youtube See channel you later, guys. insane throttle biker news radio show Rah!